In this video, I'm going to look at reacting amount calculations that involve masses of chemicals. So very simply, these calculations tend to um, get you to calculate how many grams, kilos, tons of a substance could be made from a given mass, could be in grams, kilos, tons again, of something else. So because these calculations involve masses of chemicals, we better just remind ourselves of the formula triangle. And of course, it's this one here. Mass, moles, MR. So for example, if we wanted to calculate the number of moles of something, we would divide the mass that we've got by the MR of the chemical. So we'll start with a, a simple question. So we're asked, what mass of calcium oxide, CaO, forms when 25 grams of calcium carbonate, CaCO3, decomposes? And there's the equation for that reaction. So you can see I've written two words into the equation. I've written known above calcium carbonate and unknown above calcium oxide. And that's basically because we're told how many grams of calcium carbonate we've got. That's why it's our known substance. And we need to find out what mass of calcium oxide can form. So that's our unknown substance. So once we've established our known substance and our unknown substance, the next thing we do is we work out how many moles of the known substance we've got. We can do that because we know the mass of the known substance and obviously we always know the MR because we can always work it out from the formula. So that mean, that's coming out at 0.2498 moles of calcium carbonate. Once we know the moles of known, we then use the mole ratio in the chemical equation between the two substances. And that's going to help us establish how many moles of the unknown substance, in this case, we can make. So this is the balanced equation, obviously, and the mole ratio between the two chemicals we're interested in is 1 to 1. There's no numbers in front um, used to balance the equation, and so that means that 1 mole of calcium carbonate decomposes to form 1 mole of calcium oxide. And there you have the answer. Moles of unknown is the same as the moles of known due to that 1 to 1 ratio. And then obviously the final thing we do, now we know the moles of unknown. Again, we always know the MR of something. So the mass of unknown equals the number of moles times the MR. And that's coming out at 14.01 grams. So let's look at this question now. What mass of sulphur combines with 8 grams of copper? to form copper 1 sulphide Cu2S according to this equation. So if you want to have a go, press pause and then play on and we'll go through the solution. So I've established the known and the unknown terms in the equation. And notice they're both on the same side of the arrow. Don't worry about that. The method still the same. So our known substance is copper our unknown substance is sulphur. So the moles of copper is the mass divided by the MR, and that comes out at 0.126. If you are wondering what about this two, well, we're gonna factor that in now. So the moles of unknown, the moles of sulphur, well, the equation's telling us that for every two moles of copper, only one mole of sulphur is needed. So if we've got 0.126 moles of copper, then we only need half that amount for the moles of sulphur. So there's this 2 to 1 ratio coming into play now. So basically we divide the moles of the known substance by 2, and that gives us our unknown moles of 0.063. And so converting that to a mass, we multiply the moles by the MR, so it's the 0.063 times the MR of sulphur, which is 32.1. And to three significant figures, that's coming out at 2.02 .02 grams. 
Let's have a look at this one now. What mass of carbon dioxide can be obtained from one kilogram of iron three oxide? And there's the equation. Fe2O3 plus 3CO makes 2Fe and 3CO2. The known substance is the iron three oxide and the unknown substance is the carbon dioxide. Now the reason I've chosen this question is for this part here. We're given the mass of iron three oxide in kilograms. Now if you think about relative masses, this 159.6 is the MR of the iron three oxide. They are in grams per mole. So what that means is any mass that's divided by the MR must be in grams. So if you're given kilos, you must convert to grams. So obviously one kilogram is a thousand grams. So dividing that by the MR of the iron three oxide, we get the number of moles at 6.266. So to calculate the moles of the unknown, the carbon dioxide, we look at the mole ratio between the two and you can see it's a, a 1 to 3 ratio. So we need to multiply the moles of iron 3 oxide by 3 and that's going to give us the moles of CO2 which comes out at 18.797. And finally to convert that into a mass we multiply the moles by the MR and we get in grams 827.1 grams or in kilograms if you want, 0 0.8271 kilos. Little tip for you here, in a question sometimes it will have space for your final answer and then the units will be there. So if you see grams there, that means that your answer must be given obviously in grams. But sometimes you may see a kilograms there for example. Now when you do these calculations here, remember we're multiplying moles by an MR which is in grams, that means that that answer is going to be in grams. So there's that extra conversion needed to get into the units that the examiner wants. We'll just finish with the, the steps broken down. So the first thing you would do is identify the known and the unknown substances in the balanced equation. Second thing, you would calculate the moles of the known substance. And there you've got the formula in the bracket. The number of moles equals the mass divided by the relative mass. Thirdly, you would deduce the moles of the unknown substance from the mole ratio in the equation. And the last thing you would do is calculate the mass of the unknown. And that's done by multiplying the number of moles by the MR of the unknown substance. And just a final sort of tip, if the masses of the known are given in anything other than grams, you've got to convert that to grams. And you've also got to be careful about the units at the very end of the calculation. So remember, when you hit the equals button on your calculator at this point, your mass will be in grams. So you need to then look at the units that the examiner wants the answer in and, if necessary, convert to those units.